Hello, this is Big Boss, Rescue Chief of Humane Emergency Animal Rescue. In the following still images and video, you will see some of the latest techniques and equipment developed for technical large animal emergency rescue. This class was hosted by Broward County Sheriff, Fire Rescue Special Operations, and instructed by Rebecca Husted of Technical Large Animal Emergency Rescue Incorporated. Day 1. Technical rescue teams practice using the transport glide designed for moving large animals. The glide can also be used as an edge protector or a ramp where less friction is desired among its many uses. The Anderson Rescue Slings has many straps and components. With practice, it can be applied in a matter of a few minutes. Originally designed for use in a hospital setting, it was recognized as being useful in the field and especially for helicopter extractions. It is not usually necessary for most large animal extrication operations. Here a team demonstrates how proper rigging is necessary to a successful extrication. There are several rigging components missing from these images that would ensure a more successful operation. A spreader bar along with a rear and chest strap would help ensure the rigging stays where it will be most effective. TRT set up a haul line that will connect to a transport glide. Often the simplest solutions are the best. Forward and rear assist using a sling and rope may be all that's needed. The Swiss seat should be familiar to you if you've been rappelling or done any type of technical climbing. Here it's being used to lift a patient with a mechanical advantage system. This is another example of how a couple of slings and rope can assist moving an animal as large as a horse without a transport glide using people power. In this video we can see the rear sling assist in action. Team members use thoracic and abdominal positioned slings and rope to move the mannequin onto the transport glide then use the glide to move up the embankment. Mission success. Day 2. Team members prepare several mud, trench, and hull challenges for course attendees. This segment on mud extrication shows how difficult it is to guide a Nicopolis needle through the mud without the assistance of water or air. The Nicopolis needle shown in this video is equipped with fittings that will accommodate an air or water supply that would help create a path for the needle to pass through. These needles can be commercially purchased or homemade. Also shown is a flexible flat strap guide used by team members closest to the front legs. The, fret, the, the flat strap guide is more effective when there are no dense obstacles in its path. After much effort without air or water assistance, the Nicopolis needle passes through the paracord tagline that will pull the sling into position. The team using the flat strap guide was never able to locate the end after multiple attempts and digging. We can see that the thoracic and abdominal slings are in place, the transport glide is staged, the spreader bar and mechanical advantage rigging are ready. Mud lances. Here we'll see the effectiveness that these tools have when used with water. The lances have fittings that will allow them to be used with an air or water supply. When used with air or water, they will help break the suction created by mud on the animal's legs. This suction is so powerful that it will keep an animal from being removed from a mud pit. This type of extrication, if not performed properly, can cause serious injury or death to the animal. Mud lances are available on the commercial market or can be homemade. When purchased, they usually come in a set of four that will allow for the suction to be addressed simultaneously on all four limbs. Fire personnel watching this, you can connect the lances to your SCBA tanks. 
Although staged for this training, high emotions have no place on the scene of an emergency incident. From owners to witnesses, only experienced rescue personnel should be allowed in the hot zone. As we watch this footage, it's important to note that this type of incident takes time to perform successfully. It's one of the reasons there's as much footage of this incident type shown in this video. As this mud entrapment extrication progresses, it's clear to see the difficulties rescue personnel encounter. A team needs to know about the animal species in need, or have an experienced animal handler trained to operate on the scene of an emergency. Technical rope rescue techniques and rigging are essential in addition to the specialized equipment designed for large animal rescue. Large animal incidents require a significant investment in personnel, training, and equipment. From the initial scene assessment, personnel safety address, equipment placed, and approximately 10 plus TRT members involved, this rescue took about two hours to complete. Nearing the end of this incident, as tension is applied to the rigging and the suction on the limbs is released, the animal is slowly extricated. Moving away from extrications for a moment, let's listen to a Fort Lauderdale mounted police officer give advice how to approach a horse to apply head protection. Also try, when we put our halters on and stuff, we're putting them on from the side here so they can see us. So maybe this, I've never put one of these on before, so I'm not sure. Um, you too? Maybe consider coming up to the side and yep. not putting it from straight on, but from up underneath. Yep. And try it, see and if just that goes would be a little bit better. And when he's a good boy, you pat him. Of course, this won't work for every situation, as many of the horses will be in various locations. That was an example of a cooperative horse. Here's an example of an uncooperative one. Another typical situation large animals get into are holes requiring high point rigging for extrication. Palm Beach County Fire Rescue set up their bipod, or A-frame in redneck terminology, so the mannequin could be extricated with rope systems. First, a Swiss seat is applied. Next, the rope rigging is attached for the initial lift. Once the animal is lifted out of the hole, the next step is to use the bipod to shift the load away from the hole to a safe area. It can be let out by hand or placed onto a transport glide. Here we can see the use of the wire rope controlling the bipod movement. Once the load is shifted, the mannequin is placed on the glide for transportation. Thanks to the efforts of Palm Beach County Fire Rescue setting up the equipment, this extrication went smoothly and quickly. There were several trench extrication scenarios. This one had a horse on its back in the trench requiring rapid extrication. Using slings, girth hitches were used to connect to the horse's legs, connected to a spreader bar, then lifted by an excavator. Being the incident commander on this extrication, there is no video. I was only able to snap a few photos. On to the next trench scenario. Here the horse is upright. There are several possibilities of extrication. One, use the slings and pull it out by hand if you have enough personnel as shown in this segment. It could also be lifted out by heavy equipment or the trench extended to form a ramp and walk it out, to name a few. This trench scenario has the horse on its back, not requiring rapid extrication. The teams here extend the trench to form a ramp, then slide the horse onto the glide, then move the horse and glide together to successfully extricate the horse. A suggestion for any of these trench incidents, since the crews in this class are all TRTs, is have any personnel working next to the trench edge have on full body harnesses connected to the ropes so anyone falling into the trench can be quickly extricated or pulled away should the trench begin to collapse. I had such a good time during our two days of training I could hardly sleep. It was great catching up with Rebecca as I had not seen her since the last time I attended a T-layer course back in 2004 or 2005. This class would be the fourth time I've taken the training. It gets better every time as the techniques and technology are constantly improving. 
It was also fantastic working with the TRTs from the local fire departments. It was reassuring seeing how the fire service is progressing. 20 years ago, I would never have imagined there would be NFPA standards and fire departments would be training to rescue animals. Like Dr. Tomas Jimenez says, an animal emergency is a human emergency. The intent of this video is to raise awareness of your knowledge of technical large animal emergency rescue. It is not intended to be a teaching aid. Thank you to Rebecca and Chief Nugent with the BSO Fire Rescue Special Operations Division and all the technical rescue teams that attended this training class. It was a rewarding two days. If you would like to support us, find us on our Facebook page for the most up-to-date contact information. Don't forget to support your local animal rescue team. This is the Big Boss Rescue Chief of Humane Emergency Animal Rescue. Out.